Yo, what is going on today, YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Today's video, we're going to be going through Season 11, things that we like and things that we don't like. Earlier today, Titan Chaos, one of the lead bounce and smite devs, tweeted out something like, interested to hear what you guys think, Season 11, things you like, things you dislike, things you want to see, and just asking for feedback from everyone. And there was a few interesting things that, that I saw that I want to put my kind of thoughts out for. I was going to respond on Twitter, but I was like, no, this will make a good YouTube video so I can talk kind of about what I like about Season 11 so far and what I don't like go from there and also can see what other people like and don't like chaos tweeted it question like that uh hazel responded with really like how the changes feel big enough for it to be a new season i'm sure it was tough for you guys to balance making season 11 devoting people to smite 2 which is true teleports and scepters are fun item shifts are all pretty good only thing i'd say feel clunky is the new fg mechanic and the fg mechanic he's talking about is the effigy who's ever tanking fire giant has to pull fire giant on the side and you have to have that kill the effigy. Otherwise, if you do actually auto attack it, you're losing DPS on fire. But you're also losing DPS on fire if you don't kill it. So the best thing to do is to have who's ever tanking, drag it over the effigy, get the effigy killed, and then continue hitting fire giant. So you can DPS it as, uh, as quick as possible. It is a little funky, I think a little clunky, but I think it is a good thing for the game. I think slowing down fire giant just a tiny bit at that top end and not allowing somebody to kind of just keep it at like this threat of pulling fire and then just one-shotting it. I think it's in a, a nice spot as is with the effigy. I think it is just a little clunky, but I do like it. And I agree. Teleport acceptors, 10 out of 10. I love them. Elion tweeted, recipes need to come back. Um, I think recipes were bad. I think they were good for the game when they happened, but I hated the free gold when there's already free gold in the game. I hated having to do something else in the early game that casuals or, or players that don't really pay attention to stuff, they kind of messed out on. I think adding them as shard, uh, just as like something else, was a good idea. And I think making them all a little bit worse was also a really good idea because there's not something you get, or you used to get it at like level five, now you get it at level one. So I think it was really cool. But something I really agree with Andy on is this beacon should be higher value with add-on things. Best fights are beacon, 100%. He is so true with this. Beacon fights, I, I think, or beacon should be a little bit stronger. I would be interested allowing beacon to actually kill phoenixes if they're low enough. Then you actually have to like contest the fight there. Or if a tower is low enough, you have to contest it to, to keep your tower alive. Uh, actually, that already happens. But just to keep your phoenix alive, making it so beacon's actually a threat, I think it would be really interesting. Especially because beacon, or, I mean, phoenixes heal up. So getting poke onto a phoenix really means nothing unless you're actually killing the phoenix. You know, Tiki's need to stay, Portal, Goaded Mechanic, all 10 out of 10. I love both of those. Tiki's have been one of their best changes in like the last three years. Tiki's were phenomenal. Tranquilize, break player that gets in all my games in the early morning. Horrific, too strong in early, mid, nerf, early game potency only. I think it is just too strong outright at all points. I could ramble. Okay, I'll ramble. Quick ramble, quick ramble. Not a long one. It's too strong for what it does. It does it for too long. It does too many things and it does both of them offensively and defensively. So I think there are so many different ways you can nerf Horrific. And it can be early, it can be late. Everything is just too too strong. Buff Wing Shard, give it slight haste effect. I actually think Wing Shard is probably your best shard. I think the Golden Shard is overbought. I think Horn Shard is overbought. I think Vision Shard is really underbought. Golden Shard is really good in solo lane. I think it is very bad in duo lane a lot of the times. I think Wing Shard has a lot more value. I don't think it needs a haste effect. Mystical Mail needs a nerf, impossible to land against without getting it yourself. This one I'm unsure about because I've only played a couple solo games and it didn't feel that dominant, but I'm not going to speak on this one because I don't know. Maybe you guys let me know if you think Mystical Mail is too strong or, or if it's too imposing or if they have it, you have to get it. Let me know because I'm not too sure with this one. Can we add base attack speed to Diamond Air and roof some from passive? This is a good idea, actually. Giving it like 20% base and then... Instead of 20% per stack, just 10% per stack. So it has a slightly less ceiling, but a nice little base. So it doesn't just feel terrible if you don't fight on minion waves. I actually like this idea by Trank. Christian G3 says, my main gripe is that I don't think the lifesteal changes are that helpful or what they're intended to do. It is effectively impossible to out of combat heal as a hunter, which is fine if that's the goal, but an in combat heal isn't strong enough to deal with dive. This just isn't true. Actually, I don't want to say it's not true, but I think he is incorrect without me knowing all the information that he, he deals with so one with all the healing outside of lifesteal just healing in the game med lifesteal changes for both mages and hunters a lot of lifesteal or, or just healing built into a lot of kits there's a ton of it anti-heals needed one anti-heals are super strong anti-heal is very strong if you see a lot of healing you're just going to build anti-heal and then two i've seen a ton of crimson claw as your solo lifesteal item that item is not intended to be a solo lifesteal item that item is intended to pair with another lifesteal item to be like a double lifesteal build for ultra survivability. And I think it, it does that really well. 
that's why I was going to actually have a video this week about Hunter builds and kind of my opinion on them right now. Cause I also saw a tweet talking about mannequin scepter in, in a build by didacted. And I can talk about that. If you guys are interested in that, also my idea, my thoughts on that, but basically I think cowl crimson claw is the best combo in the game. I think maybe arrow devs or arrow Aussie, but I think claw is being overbought. Doesn't make sense how people are buying it. They're basically buying it as an extra 15% shield or 15% health in the form of a shield. That's literally all they're getting from the item. It's, it's, I guess, good power, good attack speed, which is fine. But it's not an actual true lifesteal item. It's worse than Aussie. It's worse than devs. It's worse than basically every lifesteal item that's not Bloodforge. It is basically like Cowl, and Cowl's not a good solo lifesteal item. So that's the problem with Claw. It does what it does well, but you need to pair it with another lifesteal item. That's my opinion. But yeah, let me know if you guys want me to kind of talk about Hunter builds. Jim Safelda says, as a solo laner, teleporter is extremely fun to play around. 100% agreed. Really changes mid game for solo and gets you involved in team fights. Love the new glyphs, pre level 12 relics change, low winning phase. Ooh. I'm going to disagree there. I think the relics changes, getting them passively, and I talked about this. Oh, I talked to. The, the balance team when I was playtesting that I didn't like it. I think it was a bad pacing change for the game when one, you're already getting a ton of gold. Two, it's now just giving you free relic upgrades. And three, it just makes it so there's less depth to the game, if you know what I'm saying. Because you're kind of, unless you're upgrading your relic immediately, as soon as you buy it, you're losing out on gold, putting gold into your relic to get like the extra cooldown because you already have like this little step. How, how can I word this? Say you're like 50% of the way, level eight, you back, you upgrade your relic to get it up just quicker. Uh, you've essentially wasted 300 gold because you're going to get it upgraded in another two minutes anyway. So there's, you just have to kind of wait on it. I don't like that. I think the depth of the game where having to upgrade your relics and put that gold into the items if you want them is good. And I think it makes it so backliners are more safe because 90% of the time backliners are getting their beads upgraded quicker than they ever would have before because nobody invests that 300 gold or most people didn't but now they just kind of get it for free which i don't like enjoying the passive shards but feel like they outperform the active shards to liking the comet and casual passive shards the vibrant shard is terrible probably the worst shard a sturdy shard is very strong probably a nerf to sturdy shard is something that needs to happen and I, like i said golden shard i think is a little overrated outside of solo lane i think wing shard is good vision shard is good i do think horn shard is a little weak so I'm 50 50 on the the shard take divine legacy give a new player a reason to play other gods would be nice to possibly yeah yeah that one i'm not too sure about like the new shards new wards are cool new wards are dope 10 out of 10 i love them thorns feels absolutely worthless this is just not true thorns is in a probably the most balanced spot thorns ever been in it rides this line of being absolutely useless or absolutely busted and i think it's in a a good spot right now and i really do like it so i disagree wholeheartedly on thorns wish i had more anti-crit options maybe i don't know I don't think I have an opinion on that one. Awesome Dog says the obelisk in mid lane does little damage to structures and feel rewarding to get. Obelisk in mid lane? The beacon? I can kind of see that. I can kind of see that. The passive shards are overtuned compared to the other shards. I already talked about that. New wards are cool. Keep them coming. Yep. The curse stuff went unchanged for PTS. Meteors are fun. Uh, this did get nerfed. It used to be 10 power you got from the, the Deathbringer glyph and now it's only five everything feels great in particular the new snack stacking mechanics and yeah stacking mechanics i was indifferent towards them when it first launched i think it would have been cooler if they kept some stacking through actual last hitting minions and some through damage stacking you know it kind of feels like they felt like they had to do one or the other one i think they could have kept it separate have war warlocks be damage stacking have book be last hitting stacking have devs be last hitting stacking and then trans be damage stacking. I think that would have been really interesting, but I don't hate it completely. I, I like the potential of getting like a second or third item stacking. Deathbringer Glyph is quite over tuned, it seems. Nah. Removal of class passes also over nerfed mages a bit across the board, at least in comparison to other classes. I think junglers actually have been hurt the most by the removal of class passives. Losing that flat pen early feels terrible. Your threat feels like it's down a lot. You feel like your strength in the game in the early portion and mid portion isn't really there. You do spike again at 20, which is sick, but you do feel a little less impactful when you're supposed to be the most impactful, which is a little meh. But that is all the responses. It was a fun, you know, conversation to look at kind of what people were talking about, my opinions on stuff. Let me know what you guys think about season 11 so far. The teleporters, new glyphs, all the good stuff. I want to know what your guys' thoughts are. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, though. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.